Howdy y'all, Benzo here on the edge of the forest. Welcome to part two of how to prospect for gold, how to find gold from Greenhorn to Guru in this short series. There'll be a lot of shorter videos as we start to get in the woods talking about more specific things, some little tips and tricks, and we got gnats. So welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day. Gave you a little homework. How'd y'all do on that homework? We're going to go back to the uh, house right now and we're going to take a look at some of that homework we did. We looked at maybe a new app for your phone, a mind map, do a little history research of your area, what's going on. And we also maybe talk to your device about finding the history of gold mines in your area, what's going on. There's a large percentage of the mass of North America that has gold. So if you're not in one of those areas, I apologize consider moving so you can find gold near where you live welcome back i thought that was kind of neat to see all those different mines near me and all the different things and i hope you uh did the same thing in your area and saw what was going on even if you live in florida they're mining stuff so we're back and we're starting to learn a little bit about the gold in our areas what kind of mining is done in our area what kind of history of gold or gold mining or any type of mining that's going on within a couple hundred miles of us a couple hour drive so we're going to take that knowledge and we're going, to, we're going to sit on it. We're going to continue to learn things. I recommend reading books like... And finding other historical documents about these things in your area. Like old timey... Um, let's see, what are they called? Let's take a look. Now a lot of that stuff was written over 100 years ago. But the information is still there. The ground hasn't moved. Unless they went and dug it all out and changed it or dammed it up and flooded it, it's still there and it's still doing whatever it was doing back then. So there's a lot of potential in a lot of spots in North America. So that's what this series is mostly focused on is North America gold mining in creeks as a prospecting hobby. Now, could this be useful for anywhere in the world? Yeah. But the number one thing we're getting to now is you got to know your laws and i don't talk politics on this channel for several reasons because it's entertainment and that's not entertaining and the only politics i talk about are the politics concerning laws or regulations due to uh prospecting my area and that's on you that is going to be your personal responsibility to know what is allowable permissible what lands can you get on what lands can you not get on so that's going to be your next homework assignment you got to find what your laws are. I'm on the edge of a forest where I can go prospect for gold. I can dig in the stream bed. I can't use metal detectors. Can't use anything heavier. There's a lot of small rules like it has to be a handheld sluice. So you can't carry big sluice runs in there and nail them all together. They don't want that either. You can't dig up in the bank. You can't dig in the forest. You can't metal detect. Lots of rules. But even with those rules... I'm able to follow them and have a nice day and find some gold. There's some places where sluice boxes aren't even allowed. I can use a sluice box or a cradle here. I can't use a high banker or a dredge or anything with a motor whatsoever. So you got to just follow the rules or they will come and take your gold and take your equipment and write you a bill. And uh, out here, you don't want that to happen. So this week we have three homework assignments. You need to figure out the laws and rules in your state, province, area, county, or the land that you've already found that you can work near your home. Along with that, we have to do a little bit more research. We need some equipment. I'm going to get into my recommendations. But along with that, I want you to, uh, we're not really physically doing anything except for searching with our phones and and devices looking for information find out if there's any clubs in your area 
and surprisingly enough there's gpaa clubs all across north america and you don't even have to be a paid member which goes up continuously it might be 60 70 bucks a year now but you don't even have to pay those dues to join most of these clubs so keep that in mind so joining a club is going to be a really quick way to meet people enthusiastic and interested and you know what there's very it's very hard to find prospectors that don't want to go take somebody out and show them and, and teach them they most of them enjoy it not all but most of them and i've taken quite a few people out myself i can't take everybody out i'm sorry but we try we take quite a few people out we have a good time so we got to look up our laws we're going to look up clubs so the next thing is a provider a purveyor we got to find a hobby shop a prospecting shop it might be a couple hours from you my best one is a couple hours away there's a shop up the road they sell some stuff but it's tourist priced and it's not really the equipment I'm looking for anyway. But you can get by with just about anything. And if you're a aspiring prospector on YouTube, you've seen people prospect with Dollar General items and cheap items. Nothing wrong with that. You're only going to do so much. It's not going to hold up over time. So let's look at some equipment that I recommend. To begin with, everything's going to start and finish with a pan. So you need a gold pan. I recommend a classifier and a snuffer bottle. That's three things. Other than that, you're going to need a shovel. I recommend something for you. Not too tall, not too short, not too heavy, not too expensive. So you might just want to start out with what you got, but you might break it. We'll figure that out as we go. A lot of hand tools. You can just throw money at this constantly. There are so many different items and techniques, and there's always the next gimmick coming along. And here's a funny pan, and there's the next funny pan. And do they work, usually? Are they worth the money and time to learn new techniques? And it's about the same, you know. You can change everything and still just about the same. But there are certain equipment, pieces of equipment that are specialized for certain things. Usually it specializes down to fine gold very fine minute powdery dust and i find pretty fine gold here it's not glacial teal like up in the midwest but it's pretty fine gold so if you want to start prospecting start looking out for buckets maybe you got buckets maybe you need buckets restaurants throw them away like constantly so if you can you maybe you know somebody that works in a restaurant maybe you work in a restaurant buckets they're getting expensive to go buy talking five bucks six bucks sometimes or two or three depends on where you're getting them how thick they are how durable they are and how good they are i don't really recommend plastic handles i recommend sturdy buckets so you can uh start keeping your eye out for something like that because that's an expense that can build up over time but if you're diligent about it it's not an expense at all just like with most things so as in for a pan i'm going to recommend you use a pan that's the right size for you bigger pans get heavier not everybody can shake a big heavy pan no shame in that you do what you can do and you just keep on going some people need a little bitty pan and that's fine too i like the big super sluice the garrett super sluice and you can get the packages that watch out if you go on amazon there's a couple different ones one of them is the gold, the Freddy Dodge Gold Trap. And it comes with a smaller one, a classifier, and a snuffer bottle. It's all made by Garrett. It's real nice. It's only like 25 bucks. That is super affordable. You get your two pans, classifier, snuff, all right there. Boom, cheap. Free shipping, too. Over 25. Way to go. The other one I would recommend would be the Big Blue uh, Mine Lab. And they have a kit, too. And it's more like 40-ish. But you get several things in that too. I'm not going to buy a kit. I'm going to go to my local shop and I'm going to get mine custom. Like I can buy the pieces one at a time. So I'm going to buy the blue pan and the hexagon uh, classifier. And we're going to work with that. So we got to get equipment. 
I hope you pick well. I hope you get good stuff. And we're going to need to get a little pay dirt. If you can't afford to go buy pay dirt, get a scoop of dirt and put a fishing weight in it. You can practice with that. Because we got to learn how to pan. we got to find ground. we got to learn how to pan. we got to find gold. And once we get those basics in, we'll start moving forward. And if, when you're moving forward from there, the next step would be get a sluice box. And you want to talk about a big subject. Sluice box. That's all we all talk about because it makes the process of prospecting so much faster. It washes the dirt away so much more efficiently and quicker than a pan. Usually. Depends on the material. Some material is quite easy to pan. Some are not. Here, a sluice box makes things two to three times faster because of the amount of deep, heavy clay sediment and ironstone rocks. It's just, you got to pan slow or you're panning it out. That's just the bottom line out here. But a sluice box really does help speed things up. Today, I've got here the sluice box I'm going to recommend. I recommend the RPE for a beginning prospector. The Robinson Prospecting Equipment. You can find this in lots of different places. It usually sells for about 40 bucks, give or take. Um, I traded for this one because I'm a prospector and prospectors like to barter. This one is signed by Jason Keith from Jason Keith Prospecting. This has been in the Dominican Republic. Pretty neat. And finding some of that flaky, chunky gold they have down there. So this is the sluice box I would recommend you buy to start out with because it's under 50 bucks and that's a big deal. So if you get that for under 50, you get the uh, Garrett kit for 25. That gives you 25, 30 dollars to get you a bag of dirt because it's all about starting out for 100 bucks. I don't know if I made that claim. That's starting out for 100 bucks. You get all the starter equipment. And get your little bag of gold dirt and $10 shovel. That's all you need to start out with. $100 and you've got quite a bit of equipment. If you don't have a pack, you probably have a book bag you can use. Most things will hold a gold pan. So that's, we're getting there, guys. So we're almost ready to go find some gold. we got some homework to do. So until next time, get in the creek and get that gold. And do your homework. we got to find some more.